Hi guys, it's Mark Zikri, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zikri of Space Command. And the other day, I taught an executive producer class, a super mentors class, with some amazing guests, including Rockne O'Bannon, who created Farscape, Alien Nation, Sequest, Defiance, Stephen Galloway, the senior editor of The Hollywood Reporter, and um, Eric Kaplan, who's uh, executive producer of The Big Bang Theory and won an Emmy for Futurama. But additionally, we had Nicholas Meyer. Now, Nicholas Meyer is currently a writer-producer on Star Trek Discovery, the new Star Trek series that will be coming out shortly, and he couldn't talk about that. But he's also the brilliant writer of The 7% Solution, wrote and directed Time After Time, a wonderful film, uh, also directed The, the Day After. I, I don't recall if he wrote that as well. He may well have. And, um, and also was a writer uh, on Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home, writer-director on Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. But more than that... He was the uncredited writer and the writer and the director who was credited with Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan, one of my favorite movies. Now um, he act, he took a few minutes and he talked about directing William Shatner and Ricardo Montalban in The Wrath of Khan, and it was wonderful materials, things that I hadn't heard about previously. Now Nick has written his memoir. This material is in his memoir, so I urge you all to run out right now and buy his memoir. But in the uh, in the interim, before Amazon delivers it to you. Uh, you can you can actually see and hear Nick telling these wonderful wonderful stories, a brilliant director and a wonderful film. It reinvigorated and reinvented the Star Trek franchise and uh, and if you haven't seen it recently, watch it again because it really holds up. It's quite quite wonderful. So without any further ado, uh, Nicholas Meyer. And we'll talk to you soon. And again, if you haven't subscribed to the Mr. Sci-Fi YouTube channel, go on to the Mr. Sci-Fi YouTube channel. You can watch a lot of videos just like this one. So take it away, Nick. I don't want to over-rehearse. I don't want to overcook it because the camera will, will pick up the lack of spontaneity. But you'll, you'll find things out. So one of the things I found out uh, working with William Shatner on, on Star Trek is that he was always sort of striking attitudes. He'd, he'd, got, he'd gotten into all these habits of, you know, I'm Captain Kirk, and I thought, how do, you know, how do I bust through that? And, and I realized that if I tackled it head on, he would become very, very defensive, as many people, you know, understandably. Um, but I did understand that he got better when he, when he stopped doing that. How to stop him from doing that was getting him to be bored with what he was doing. <laughs> and when he was bored, he let down his guard and he just, and other things came to the fore because he, he, wasn't, he wasn't posturing. And what was interesting is to go from working with him in the same movie with Montalban. And Montalban is a great actor, was a great, great actor. Wasted, like, like most actors. <laughs> and, and he came in and we were doing a, a six-page sequence which was his initial sequence in the movie and he was the only actor with whom I didn't get to rehearse because he was doing his television show. I gave him a copy of Moby Dick I said read this and you'll and he he came on set with and he was letter perfect and I had this idea because I think the poor actors it's always cut cut it's always coitus interruptus and what about just letting them you know this nice six-page thing about why he's so angry and ha has been marooned and all this stuff and and I thought try to do it in one camera move mm -hmm. so so he can just do it and we'll dance around him for 23 marks and so he came in first day and every actor by the way only wants to know one thing about the director is he crazy <laughs> <laughs> how crazy do I have to pull the boat over the mountain? Am I going to live? You know, and there may be a lot of ways in which they're asking that question, but they're asking it. And he didn't know me. He's very, very courteous man, very, very gentleman, courtly, I think. Came in, letter perfect for these six pages, hit every mark. Boom, 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 boom. And he was screaming the whole thing at the top of his lungs. It was just like, whoa! And everybody was standing there. And I'm thinking, this is the second movie I've ever directed. This man, if we just typed up his credits, are taller than I am. You know, it's a long list. What is he going to do if I start telling him things? And I, I really didn't know. So I said, 
Okay, well, now they, they're going to do their lighting. Let's go back in your trailer and we can, you know, chat a little bit about the character. And I went in there and he's sitting there opaquely waiting. <laughs> and uh, I said, you know, Laurence Olivier once said that an actor should never show an audience his top. Because once you show your top, they know you've got no place else to go. Mm -hmm. And he looks at me and goes, oh, you're going to direct me. <laughs> <laughs> he said, that's really good. I need direction. I don't know what I'm doing up there. <laughs> and then he started to tell me stories about Mervyn Leroy and all these oh. other directors they work with who would say to him, Ricardo, make it a good scene. <laughs> and so we evolved a, a collaboration. And I always begin by when I'm interviewing people to work on a movie or something, I say, look, I know nothing. I'm an idiot. So you have to A, tell me and pick the best people. And B, you have to not mind telling me. And C, you can't go Ray right mad if I still want to do it my way. I, I, you know, I reserve the right to say no. I don't claim omniscience. I need all the help I can get. I want the best cinematographer. I want the best editor. But don't forget, you know, I'm the, I'm the director of it. And if you can live with my ignorance next to your expertise, it'll work. And meanwhile, trying to be as ingratiating and make them like me which is easy because I tend to like, you know, most people, mm -hmm. unless, unless you're, yeah. How many people here are registered <laughs> to vote? How many, how many people <laughs> registered to vote? To vote, yeah. Okay. By the way, that was the best answer ever. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, I, but I had a question. Uh -huh. I had a question off what you said. So you, had, you said that once Shatner got bored, you could get him off his tricks. So how did you go about getting him to be bored? We just kept doing it again and again. Uh -huh. um, which just goes back to Bressel, the Bressel strategy with his actors. Was that, was that very similar? Yeah. It was, I, and I remember the moment when I discovered it, it was branded in my, he had a line, and the line was, here it comes. And it's like his sneaky thing that he's doing to the other guy. And, mm -hmm. and the first time he said it, he said, here it comes. And I thought, wait, wait, Bill, <laughs> this guy is a really smart guy. He's going to know it's, your sarcasm is dripping off the lens here. <laughs> Let me get that. Um, and I said, let's, let's do it again. And it came off again, very heavy handed. And I said, you know what? That wasn't good for sound. Was it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we just kept doing it. And finally, what you see is in the movie. Uh -huh. And that's the way the rest of the performance was more or less wow. got. It just, and after a while, he sort of knew what I was doing. And he just, you know, he started being less defensive about the role and himself as the star and captain. And he got more into what the movie was about, which was about a man getting old mm -hmm. and losing his friends. You know, you say you don't like science fiction, but where does, what is science fiction? And at what point does the human component of it become more important? Any science fiction movie I always made was always set on planet Earth right here, right now, no matter what they were wearing. 